we have learned about some specific physical features called characters that are used to identify dinosaurs and to classify them into smaller groups. We have also learned that cladograms are diagrams used to organize these groups according to their similarities and differences. I'm Andrew DeJesus. And I'm Lauren Bagley. And we will be your hosts as we explore dinosaurs from a biblical perspective. As we have learned in previous episodes, dinosaurs belong to a group of diapsids called archosaurs. Dinosaurs are divided into two groups based on their hip structures, the Saurischians and the Ornithischians. The Saurischian, or lizard-hipped dinosaurs, are divided into two groups, the sauropods and the theropods. These two groups are subdivided into many smaller groups based on specific characters that make them different from one another. The ornithischian, or bird hip dinosaurs, are also divided into smaller groups. We have already discussed some characters of two groups of the Saurischian dinosaurs. In a previous video series, we talked about two worldviews that influence how scientists interpret data, a naturalistic worldview and a biblical worldview. Cladograms show different groups of plants or animals and which groups are similar to each other and which groups are different. Scientists interpret this information according to their worldview. Scientists with a naturalistic worldview use cladograms to try to figure out how evolution occurred. Scientists with a biblical worldview use the same cladograms to see how different kinds of creatures that were created by God compare with each other. Cladograms help them see which kinds of creatures have more similarities to each other and which kinds have more differences. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at our dinosaur cladogram. Lesuthosaurus is the first ornithischian we will discuss. It is at the base of the ornithischian side of the cladogram. That means that of all the ornithischian dinosaurs, it is the most like the saurischians. The main character that makes it different is its bird-like hip structure. The next group of ornithischians on our cladogram is the Thyreophora, which have bony plates in their skin, like armor. They are subdivided into several smaller groups. The Stegosauria are armored along the back and tail. The Ankylosauria had flatter backs covered with horizontal plates and multiple rows of spikes on their sides and backs. Our next group is the Ornithopoda, which includes the dinosaur Heterodontosaurus. Ornithopods can be identified by several specific characters. One must look carefully at small details of their bones in order to recognize these characters. First, one of the bones at the back of their skull has a crescent-shaped bump called the paroxipital process. The process is shown in blue and the crescent shape is outlined in red. Second, the area of contact between the premaxilla bone, shown in orange, and the lacrimal bone, shown in green, is found on the external surface of the snout. Finally, the end of the lower jaw is more square-shaped than the jaws of some other dinosaurs. The next group on our cladogram is the Euornithopoda, which includes the well-known Iguanodon. Euornithopoda have lower jaws that are more rounded. Remember, each node on the cladogram represents the presence or absence of specific characters that make that group of dinosaurs different from the previous ones. A scientist with a naturalistic worldview would interpret these differences as being the result of evolution. A scientist with a biblical worldview would interpret them as being the result of different groups having been created with different designs. Anatosaurus is a representative of the Hadrosauridae, or duck-billed dinosaurs, which were the next group on our cladogram. Hadrosauridae don't have the serangular foramen a hole near the back of their jaws that was present in the dinosaurs we have already discussed. Our next group is the Pachycephalosauria. They have a very thick skull and spikes on the back of their head. The last group on our cladogram is the Ceratopsia. Triceratops is the best known representative of this group. Ceratopsians have a beak called the rostral bone on the upper jaw. Both Ceratopsia and Pachycephalosauria are grouped together as the marginocephalia, which are dinosaurs that have a small shelf or a frill of bone over the back of the skull. Let's review. We have learned about some specific physical features called characters that are used to identify dinosaurs and to classify them into smaller groups. Cladograms organize the different dinosaur groups by the characters they share. 
While cladograms are used by some scientists to try to figure out how different kinds of creatures evolved, what they really show are simply the differences and similarities between various groups. They are a good way to classify the many different kinds of animals and plants that God has created. We have discussed just a small fraction of the many kinds of dinosaurs that once lived. The middle layers of the fossil record, called the Mesozoic, contain an amazing variety of dinosaur sizes and characters, similar to the diversity we see in animals that are alive today. The variety in the creatures we see living today, along with the diversity we find in the fossil record, show how creative and powerful God is. The design of the different kinds of dinosaurs and the complexity of the dinosaur communities that have been discovered in the fossil record are truly amazing. Just like the animals that are alive today, they are evidence of a designer who loves diversity. Thank you for joining us as we have used a biblical perspective to explore these fascinating creatures. Thank you.